some scrapers and in two and a half hours had my car ready to go and warmed up. Then I had to get a four wheel drive to pull me out to the road. And then I started out and when I got to the edge of town, I thought I probably ought to turn around and go back home. But I prayed and I said, Lord, I'm on mission trying to get there for Saturday and for Sunday. I said, please help me, and he did. I drove 30, 35 mile an hour all the way to Clarksville, Tennessee, and then the roads opened up. <laughs> and I was never so glad to get back to Alabama and to find the temperature in the 40s at, in the evening, late at night, and to know that back home it was five degrees and wind chill below zero <laughs> at my mother's house. So we don't know how thankful to be that all we have is rain out here. We're so blessed in the South to have the weather that we enjoy. I want to welcome you here today and, and say how good it is to have each and every one of you here. We're also glad to have Mrs. Houghton in our service today and appreciate her presence. And it's so good to have Mike and Joy and Diane and her daughter here today. We love all of you. Thank you for coming. And I know we're going to receive a wonderful blessing for having come to the house of God. Even though it's raining, we've got sunshine in our souls today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. And I remind you to pass the orange folder. and Let everyone sign the folder. And also... I remind our guests to sign the guest register on our new guest registry stand. I hope you all have noticed that. We thank uh, Brother Julian uh, for making that, staining it, and shipping it to us. What a wonderful addition to our Narthex, and we certainly thank him for his kindness and for all that they did to give us our guest registry stand. So be sure and sign if you're a guest today. Shall we pray together? Father, we're so thankful for the Thanksgiving season we just enjoyed with many of our family members. We thank you, Father, for the many answers to prayer that we've enjoyed, and we've got others that we're looking forward to to hearing the answer and to knowing, God, that you're on the throne, that you're doing your mighty work for your people, and we praise you for it. Now, Lord, we come to this service, and, Lord, we're expecting your presence. We're expecting, God, that through the singing of our Christmas hymns and, Father, through the praising of our people and through the testimony of the saints, through the rejoicing that will be in our hearts because of the peace of God that we enjoy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, bless this service. Anoint it with your Holy Spirit. May every facet of it be an offering unto you that will bring glory to your holy name. And we'll give you praise, for we ask these favors in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated for the lighting of our Advent candle, the candle of peace. We light the second Advent candle. This candle represents peace. It has been said that sometimes God calms his storm, and sometimes he lets his storm rage and calms his people. Praise God, his peace goes way beyond our understanding. The eternal light is is the eternal is my light amidst my darkness and my rescue in times of trouble. So whom shall I fear? He surrounds me with a fortress of protection so nothing could cause me alarm. When my enemies advanced to devour me alive, they tripped and fell flat on their faces into the soil. When the armies of the enemy surround me, I will not be afraid. When death calls for me in the midst of war, my soul is confident and unmoved. I am pleading with the Eternal for this one thing, my soul's desire, to live with him all of my days in the shadow of his temple, to behold his beauty and ponder his ways in the company of his people. His house is my shelter and secret retreat. It is there I find peace in the midst of the storm and turmoil. Safety sits with me in the hiding place of God. He will set me on a rock high above the fray. 
God lifts me high above those whose thoughts of death and deceit that call for my life. I will enter his presence, offering sacrifices of praise. In his house I am overcome with joy as I sing, yes, and play music for the eternal alone. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my enemies be lifted up above my enemies around, uh, round about me, Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Praise God. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for loving us and sending yeah. us your son that we might be saved. Father, we are forever grateful.
Thank you, Julie. In keeping with our theme this morning, I want us to consider the subject, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. <coughs> Excuse me. If you'll turn... <coughs> Excuse me. To the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, we'll read together verses 21 through 27, and then we will read from Isaiah's prophecy, chapter 9, verse 6. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 21, if you want to stand for the reading of the word, feel free to do that. Jesus says these words to his followers. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judith saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. And then Jesus said, Peace 
I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then looking to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You may be seated. Loving Father, how we thank you this morning that through the prophets of the Old Covenant, you prophesied the coming Prince of Peace. And indeed, during this Christmas season, we celebrate who our Lord and Savior is and what it means to us as those of us who've accepted Him and committed our lives to Him and follow Him, live in obedience to His precept. We're so glad, O God, this morning that Jesus came to this world that we might have peace. Help us to understand the true significance of what it means for our Lord and Savior to be the Prince of Peace. We thank you for him. In Jesus' name, amen. The five names given to Jesus Christ by Isaiah's prophecy are not repetitious. Each one describes a particular attribute of Jesus' character. As wonderful, Jesus is the awesome one, the God in the flesh, the miracle worker. Aren't you glad he's that? Amen. As counselor, he is the advisor of all things good and best for our lives. And then, my friends, as mighty God, he's the divine one. The very God in flesh. To know Him is to know the Father's power. And all things are possible through Him. As everlasting Father, we understand Jesus to be our provider, our protector, our disciplinarian. Yes, Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is our counselor Jesus is our mighty God. He is our everlasting Father. And now, this morning, I want us to consider Jesus as the Prince of Peace. The Hebrew word for peace in this instance is shalom. And of course, many of you know that, I'm sure. The promise of peace had been given often to the Old Testament nation of Israel. In Leviticus 26, 6, he said, I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And in Psalm 29, 11, the Bible says, the Lord will bless his people with peace. But the real meaning of the word peace had alluded the people of God for centuries. So common was its usage that it was employed as a greeting of the day when Jews met, they said shalom or peace. Yet when Isaiah announced the coming of the Messiah in our text, he said that his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. What can this mean? What can it mean? to those of us who are his followers today? Well, to answer this, there are several questions that we need to consider to properly understand why Jesus indeed is our Prince of Peace. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, where is there peace in this world? Where is there peace in this world? 
When Isaiah spake this prophecy some 2,700 years ago, his nation was threatened with destruction. Already the rumblings of war and defeat and slavery were heard on the distant horizon. Within a generation, the nation would be suffering the bondage of Babylon for some 400 years. Think about it. And yet Isaiah says to his people, the promised one, the Messiah, is the prince of peace. Let's move forward to the century in which we live, the 21st century. We've already experienced as a nation two world wars. We've also experienced the Korean conflict. We've experienced Vietnam. We've experienced Desert Storm and the Iraq War and now Afghanistan and all the turmoil there. All the fighting around the world. Think about it. The Prince of Peace. Yet Isaiah held out to the people a magnificent hope. If you turn back to Isaiah 9, verse 2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. John the beloved disciple of Jesus says, the light came into the world and it comprehended it not. He said, it lighteth every heart of every man in this world. What is the light? My friend, he tells us in our text, 9-6, that it's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. It's Jesus, the Word become flesh that lighteth every man. That showeth the way, that gives us the peace that's not of this world. So this brings us to our next question. What is this peace that the peace of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, can bring to us in our 21st century? The peace that Jesus came to bring is a peace that passeth the understanding of the world. Israel didn't understand it and many today do not understand it because they're still teaching that Jesus is coming again and going to establish a kingdom on this earth and bring peace. That's not the peace that Jesus came to bring. The, pre the Prince of Peace brought a peace far more important than the absence of war. It's not a political peace. It's not a peace among nations that Jesus came to bring. It's not a peace that outlaws war in this world. It's more than non-aggression non treaties. It's more than diplomatic settlements. It's more than the United Nations. It's far more than that. Jesus' peace and the peace that the Prince of Peace came to bring is peace with God. Peace with God. In Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, it's sin that separates us from God. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says in Isaiah that our righteousness is as filthy rags in His sight. Jesus came to bring peace with God. That we might know right relationship with Him. Isaiah said it well when he said there is no peace to the wicked. You may not be in the midst of war. Your neighbors may not be, be ones who are threatening you and trying to do you harm. But you know nothing of the peace that Jesus came to bring unless your sins have been forgiven. Unless they've been placed under the blood of Jesus Christ. 
unless you've been justified through faith in Him and what He can do for each of us. Sin, my friends, is the great destroyer. Sin is the constant troubler of the heart. Always, sin separates us from God. So sin is the culprit. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's come to bridge from our sinfulness to His righteousness. He's come to bridge from our life of turmoil, our life of unfulfillment, to a life of fulfillment through right relationship with God. You see, sin is the source of all disorder in this world. Sin is the source of all strife in this world, of all jealousy in this world, of all envy in this world, of all covetousness in this world, of all hate and war and killing. Sin is the source. And Jesus came to forgive us of sin and give us right relationship with God. Praise His holy name forever. The Prince of Peace has come to restore order to your life and to mine. He came to redeem and to redress, if you will, the person who places his trust in him. A garment of righteousness he'll robe you with when you truly repent, repent and humbly confess him as your Savior and as your Lord. Secondly, not only does Jesus give us peace with God, but he gives the Christian the peace of God. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Not only does he give us peace with God, but he gives us the peace of God, the Prince of Peace does. In Philippians 4, 7 it says, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. The world doesn't get it yet. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This peace, this restoration to right relationship with God gives you a deep-seated tranquility that this world cannot take away. You see, when Paul wrote Philippians 4, 7, he wrote it as a prisoner in Rome. And in that cold and lightless dungeon, Paul says that the peace of God shall keep him. <laughs> On those treacherous roads Friday, the peace of God kept me. I don't know about mom. She called me about every 30 minutes. I said, mom, I've got to keep both hands on the wheel. Well, I'm worried about you. I said, don't call me. I'll call you. <laughs> keeps us in every circumstance of life. It keeps us when we've been told that word cancer is in our body. It keeps us when we have faulty valves in our heart or blockages. It keeps us when loved ones are taken from us. It keeps us when the world is upside down. It keeps us when our nation has forgotten God. It keeps us when the church is not committed to the Prince of Peace. Paul is speaking of an inner calm, a serenity of the soul that's born of faith and trust in Almighty God. Do you enjoy this tranquility this morning. And then thirdly, this peace is not only with God. It's not only in us. But it's a peace with other people. In Mark 9, 50, we're told 
have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. That means husbands and wives are to live in peace. That means that parents and children are to live in peace. That means neighbors are to live in peace. Church members are to live in peace. The Prince of Peace came to destroy broken relationships. I'm so glad that we can enjoy peace with God, the peace of God, and peace with one another through the Prince of Peace who has come and lighteth the world that is in darkness. That brings us to our third question. You may ask, Brother Abitur, how do we get this peace? Peace with God. Inner peace from God. And peace with others. How do we get it? Can it possibly come in this world in which we live? May I say, young people, search as you will, you will never find the peace that Jesus came to bring in worldly amusements. You won't find it there. Neither young marriage and middle age and older folk will you find it in possessions. I don't care how many homes you have or land you have or cars you have or bank accounts, you're not going to find this kind of peace in worldly possession. Neither will you find it in worldly acclaim. You wonder why there are suicides among some of the most popular artists in this land. You wonder why there are drug addictions among those who were acclaimed by the world as the greatest ever in their field of endeavor. You wonder why our athletes that are at the top have so many problems. The peace that Jesus came to bring does not come from peer popularity. You'll never find it there. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. The peace of God is a gift. You can't earn it. You'll never deserve it. You can't be good enough. It's God's gift to you. You must accept it in humility and repentance. Simply acknowledge, I'm a sinner. I fall short of your glory. I need what Jesus came to earth to do. His sacrifice on the cross is relevant for me. It's the only way to heaven. We must accept it in thanksgiving. Worship should always be a joyous event. We ought to be in our worship like beggars who found the bread. <laughs> Amen. We found the bread. We found that that has sustained our life. We found that that whether we're rich or poor, black or white, doesn't matter. We found it in Jesus, praise God. And nothing in this world can take it from us. You must also accept it in faith. You must truly believe that Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. You must stop your striving and you must start receiving 
from his gracious hand. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. That's where peace is. Our minds are stayed on the Lord, the Prince of Peace. And we daily walk trusting Him, obeying Him. In Psalm 119, 165, Great peace have they who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Do you love the Word of God? Jesus is the living Word. He's given us His written Word. If you love Jesus, you love the Word. And if it says things are wrong, you turn from them. Things are right, you embrace them. That's the only way to know the peace of God that Jesus came to bring. No wonder Paul said in Ephesians 2.14, Christ is our peace. The peace of God, young people, is God. <laughs> it's God. In short, peace on earth means God with us and in us. That's the hope of glory. God with us and God in us. And Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John that I've read, that the Father and the Son would indwell those who obey Him. <laughs> it's easy. It's simple. God help us to get it this Christmas season. In closing this morning, do you know the Prince of Peace? Have you received the peace that only Jesus can give? How is your personal relationship with God? Is it alive and well? Is your mind stayed on Him? Are you keeping His commandments? Is your focus Jesus Christ? How's your relationship with other people? You say, well, I'm all right. With it. Well, what about others? We can't be right with God and entertain broken relationships with others. It's an impossibility. You can't make everybody like you, but you can like everybody. I had a little boy tell me when I was leaving Springfield, he said, Brother, after you tell everybody you love them. I said, I do. <laughs> I love all of you. Amen? Young people, are you fearful of the world situation? You don't have to be. If your mind is stayed upon Jesus, and you've asked him into your heart and life. And you're walking daily in faith. He's promised if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all necessary things will be given unto us. I believe that. Remember, true peace is God with us and in us. He will be with us in every circumstance of life, even to the end of the world. We may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but we won't have to fear evil because you're with us. God's going to be with us. Promise to be. No wonder Jesus said in verse 27 of John 14 through the beloved disciple, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto thee. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I'm so glad this morning that Jesus is the Prince of Peace.
makes me feel real good. <laughs> makes me know the future's bright. Praise God. If it's on a hospital bed, doesn't matter. If it's my body being put in the ground, doesn't matter because to be absent from this body is to be present with him. Can't beat that. <laughs> Can't beat it. I just wish this world could get it. I really do. As the old country song says, they're searching in all the wrong places. It's in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let us stand together as we look to him in prayer. Father, how we thank you this morning for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Father, that Isaiah 9, 6 was fully fulfilled in him. We're glad, God, that every attribute mentioned of Christ in Isaiah 9, 6 is a reality today because Jesus came. And we celebrate this morning at Rock Creek Church of God the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we underscore that he is the Prince of Peace. The Greek says, Arenas. He is our peace. We can be at peace with God. We can have the peace of God. We can be at peace with others. And Father, most importantly, we can know that peace throughout our lives in our time of death. And we will shout about it in heaven's glory. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn in our hymnals to page 415, Take Time to Be Holy. And if you need to come and pray about your relationship with God, if you need to pray about your relationship with other people, if you need to pray about how you're facing circumstances in life and how you need just to rest in the peace of Christ, whatever your situation, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Won't you come as we sing?
Thank you for your presence today. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for your faithfulness while I was gone and for the time I had with my mother and also my son Jonathan and his family. Appreciate that very much. Got to check on our home in Effingham. Looks great. I don't know why it's not selling. Pray that it will. And pray for Jonathan. They're in the midst of downsizing because of the economy and their financial needs and they've going from a four bedroom, three bath home to a two bedroom, one bath home. And they have three children, so pray for them. And they're doing remodeling and I helped him several days while I was there. Still needs our prayers because he's got to move in this week, so pray for him. And pray that God will continue to bless other families that are in need today. We want to remind you tonight is our Christmas children's program. And Wesley and his dear wife have worked very hard on this. And we want to come out in full force. Please, please come and support our children tonight in, our, in their Christmas program. It's going to mean so much to the Higgins family, but especially to these little children who've worked so hard. So let's come, <coughs> even if one of them's not yours. They're our children. Amen. 